welcome back to the Xfinity desk. And with me at the desk, of course, is Tom T Squared Taylor. Just saw a pretty exciting match, you know, Legions going up against LOL. LOL put a put a you know made them give them a run for their money. Probably should have been a game five that we we're about to watch, but a couple uh, unfortunate series of events, maybe some chokes involved there, and that is not what in fact happened. Yeah, However. very, very typical. They always, it's the 3-1 the Masters. Uh, one of the good signs is APG took full responsibility for the game too, said, hey guys, that one's on me, probably cost us the series. So always a big fan of when people step up and uh, take accountability for, for things. So hats off to him and know that he's going to continue to do well. Definitely playing a lot better this season than he was last season. But uh, let's talk a little bit about this match because we have the match of the week coming up. This match, one, I was excited for before the season even gets got started, before the schedule was released, and we knew when these guys were going to head up because uh, that's going to be Snipe Down taking on former teammates of Lunch and Roy. Now, we do have a quick little interview that we did with Snipe Down, so let's go ahead and cut to that, take a little bit about Snipe Down and you know, where he's coming from for these matches. When it came down to the way that the Pro League was working out and the way our team was performing, Evil Geniuses, we kind of just came to the conclusion that if we didn't make the pro league finals, the top four, that there was going to be some sort of team change. You know, we, we had already tried two separate fours out commonly in Suspector, in Suspector, and neither of those really seemed to fit what we were looking for. Um, I think the one with commonly just came down to our, you know, overall in-game and out-of-game teamwork, and then Suspector, we just didn't really play enough as a team and had some internal issues. I think we finally just kind of acknowledged that you know, maybe this trio isn't going to work in a game like Halo 5. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, I think assumptions being made with us as players. I think we just started kind of holding, like, things against each other in a way with how our play styles were kind of cl clashing and not really working together. And I think we just all came to, like, a group decision. No one really felt like one person was weaker than the rest, like, in, in that sense. But we just felt like it just wasn't working out with us. And it would just be best to take our talents to different teams. And I wasn't really sure where I was going to land. And ending up with Pistola, who I've teamed with before for Halo 4 and seen a lot of success with. Mikwin, who's proven himself, you know, at the Pro League Finals. He really uh, stepped up, top player. And teaming with someone like Hook, this new young gun, it, it, it couldn't have worked out any better for me. Pretty much the dream team that I wanted to be formed. And working under an uh, organization so prestigious as Envy. Seeing EG do better than us this early in the league is, does not mean much to me at all. You know, we've beaten them pretty handily in every scrim we've played them in um but you know if this was later in the pro league maybe week five or week six and they were ahead of us you know that'd be something else but right now i feel like it's so early it's hard to tell who really stands out but you know it's it's really crazy thinking about you know the last time that i have competed against players like you know lunchbox and roy and even tally who's been coaching them for a while it's been since 2011 is the last time i played them i think so it's going to be pretty interesting going up against you know, players that I've been teaming with for so long, watching for so long, and haven't played in four plus years, you know. Um, it's going to be exciting. I'm going to bring my A game. I The last thing I want to do is lose to them, and I am just ready to show who, uh, I guess, got the better of the team changes. And there you heard it from Snipe Down. Like you said, the first time facing off against these players in over five years. Snipe Down, Pistola, Lunch Roy was a combination, a team that was extremely dominant over multiple, you know, Halo tournaments. Like, they they had an awesome run as a squad. And, of course, they have to, you know, worry about this new Envy squad. And like Snipe Down said in his interview as well, you know, they might have been a little bit worried uh, if it was later on in the season, but... You know, taking a look at EG, he's he was happy with how he made out in the whole situation. I think Evil Geniuses is pretty happy with how they made out in the situation as well because they are sitting pretty with a team that has a lot of chemistry, gets along great inside and outside of the game. I can vouch for that, hanging out with them this past weekend as well. Let's take a look at the squad. Of course, we've got the twins, Lunchbox and Roy, and the other twins, Ninja and Victory X, <laughs> although they are not actually twins, a little bit of a tan on Ninja, and I could not tell the difference between these kids. Well, right now, Victory X looks like he's been a lumberjack for the last like two months the guy's got a serious beard going on so power is in the beard i think if he ends up shaving we may see him uh lose a bit of, a little bit of his kda so hopefully he keeps that going on we're moving into no shave november here in about a month so uh i, I would love to even see what ninja's got facial hair wise maybe he could get a little goatee going on even pistola has been rocking a little bit of a beard recently you're right he really has let's take a look at some of the stats from these players here now you know like we said there was a former team here and these were the four players on the team 
team. Of course, we still got Roy and Lunchbox here locking down Evil Geniuses with some solid KDAs after the week one performance going 2 0. And Pistol and Snipe down, still some really good numbers, especially considering they got 3 0'd by Liquid day one. Yeah, this team was looking really good. We all know what happened that made it so they were no longer a team. And, and unfortunately, um, you know, th that happened. And they could have been a really solid squad for a really long time. But, you know, it, it's very interesting to see them going up against each other now. And I, I do think that both teams walk away here feeling good about the team changes that they made. And then a shout out to Halo Data Hive as well for providing those stats for us. And of course, you know, talking about that EG squad. This is the, the I, I brought it up in the beginning of the show. This was essentially Team Leftovers, who are our number one ranked team right now, right along with Luminosity. We had Lunch and Roy, who were literally struggling to find teammates, although there were a few options out there. Like, they did not have their choice of the field. Same with Victor X and Ninja. And as these guys come together, they all have a lot to prove, and they are trying to show up today to do so. Yeah, there's a lot on the line. A lot's going to be said about where these teams stand. I know a lot happens in the scrims. I know that... <laughs> what? Oh, he's talking about my tie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Master Chief, Chief Green. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. You should have seen how many times Kyle retied this tie in the bathroom before the show started. But anyway, back to the, <laughs> back to the match. Um, a lot's going to be said about how skillful these two teams are just based on this series alone because we saw a little bit of uh, a mishap against Team Liquid there for Envy and then we saw them going up against LOL I think is where they got their first win. Meanwhile, the wins coming out from EG have been absolutely huge, especially that one against Optic Gaming. So they've been put to the test more than Envy. This is another big test for them, you know, potentially going up against before the season started, the number one and two ranked teams in terms of the power rankings. And keep in mind, Envy even even got third place in the summer finals. Meanwhile, EG didn't even make it in there. You did have C9 that was there, which was Ninja and Victory X, and that team did do really good against now the Optic Gaming roster. So, so many storylines here in this game, and, and you can take a look at the maps. It's gonna be Plaza Plaza, Coliseum, Eden, and then Regret. So we don't have any Stasis, we don't have any Empire, very popular game types here that we're gonna see. And I don't know if this necessarily favors anybody. Both of these uh, teams are gonna be extremely well practiced and prepared for these yeah, kicking it off with a Plaza Squared action going on, and we are getting the players set up here in the game. So definitely don't want to you know waste any times as we are seeing Snipe Down and Pistola face off against Lunchbox and Roy for the first time. You know, minus Pistola played him for the first time well, in over five years. Keep in mind that I, I can't remember who was against. I think it was Allegiance. Um, they really dominated. I think it was was it EG. I don't know, but one of these teams played Plaza Strongholds and it wasn't looking very good for them. Uh, Allegiance had remember. a 60-second comeback on Evil Genius so on this EG. map, yeah. 98 EG to dropped, EG dropped the ball on this one, I think it was, and we saw some questionable positional rotations and not enough controlling of the nest and things like that, too. So, actually, I'm going to have to give this game type over to the favor of Envy, and it looks like Snipe Down's already getting aggressive right off the get-go, but Roy with the BR, and in my opinion, Roy is going to have to play the best on this team in order for these guys to step it up because his shot is just amazing. He makes great decisions. His communication is there one of the best overall players in the game in terms of if you were looking at the actual attributes that it takes to make a good player and ninja up there as well and ninja a fantastic slayer fantastic shot I know a lot of people have been getting on about playing other games than Halo recently but he feels that playing all these other games actually make him better at Halo and I agree sometimes you can just you know get a little bit of burnout playing too much but look at how on top of everything Envy is already prenating where Victory X is gonna go in that glass area Mikwin going up towards the S four area is going to be a nice position advantage for him and the rest of this envy squad he needs to stay alive is going to work with ola to clear out ninja over towards this dip area ninja needs to go down fast for envy to take advantage of this camouflage not up for another minute here so here comes the push from these guys looks like they're going into the dip and going to try to clear out that hotel area where ola is ends up two kills going in for the side of envy and they this is perfect for them they don't necessarily have to do anything mickwin does have to rotate because the aggression towards bottom middle area in that prius but he can just get these kills and end up electing to go back up towards top if he wants to. Another player down on the Prius area. So this is a huge battle for bottom middle. Looks like this is where everybody on the side of EG wants to focus and they do get it. So nice job by EG pushing out bottom center instead of going for that nest area. There is a lot of action happening bottom center, but he'll, er, yeah, the bottom mid eventually goes over to Evil Geniuses. That's going to be putting the first points of the match here or of the game on the board for them. Hook with a nice double kill. Nice two people on the hill quickly. 
capturing this one. Triple. Hook with the triple, and just like that, only six seconds out of that control. Yeah, and the last player is Ninja crouching bottom middle, and it looks like Hook is going to get that reset with the camouflage coming up here soon. So Envy has been in pretty prime control this entire game so far. Ninja's still running around looking for that. You can't go in there and capture bottom middle by yourself. Hook is already on top of that. It looks like Roy's going to rotate over there and grab that camo. The way that he slid makes me think that he grabbed it around that 43 area. So Envy needed to be on top of that one because I believe they were able to secure the first one. So Hook doesn't realize there's a player behind him. He's still no shield. He's going to try to rotate over here. Ends up clamoring back up, making his way over towards the flowers area. Meanwhile, EG is going to able to capture bottom middle. So two bottom middle captures coming out from the side of EG. I believe they also still have that camo in Roy's hands. Now they're going to rotate over towards the nest. And this is going to be the first time that we're going to see EG be able to hold a setup. Let's see if Envy is going to be able to retake it. I mean, and look at Pistola here. He was focusing on Yard, but the collapse out of Evil Geniuses, he's not going to be able to grab that. That's the first triple cap here we're seeing of the game. And Pistola gets taken out as well. Snipe down is pushing the Yard, trying to back up his teammate. Focus on regaining some control, but look at this. Ooh. Three members pushing in, and they contest it. They get the reset. Three kills on their side. Now they have to rotate immediately, though, because everyone's going to be spawning towards that lift area or towards top blue. So Roy's going to be choking these loop spawns. He needs to be in this glass area and watching the push over there from what I call the back wall, which is when you go from top blue over towards that snipe area, sort of by that truck. And this isn't necessarily the play that you want to have to make, but it's the play that sometimes you have to do. And that's Pistola rotating over there. And they're doing a perfect job here on the side of EG, but they need to make sure that they don't give up that nest, and they did, and also bottom middle as well. So Roy, with too much emphasis on that yard area, maybe could have focused rotating over towards the nest, and, but they still do have a little poor man set up here. Let's see if they're able to hold it. I still like what we're seeing out of Roy. He got that kill. What I didn't like was Pistola, who pushed a yard by himself, thinking he could grab some control. R Roy read him like a book, put him out, created a numbers advantage for his team, and they were able to take the lead off that. Yeah, but in the long run, it's still nest control going over to Envy's, and that's going to give them the spawns that they need. But Lunchbox killing Pistola should actually put the spawns back in EG's favor. And now everyone is spawning over in blue. So that was a big kill coming in from Lunchbox. Hooks ends up killing him. Let's see if anyone on the side of Envy is going to be able to rotate over towards the snipe area and it looks like that's going to be Mickwood waiting for the camo so again it would be a much prime position if they were still in a position where uh, Envy had to capture the nest and now they're going to have free reign kind of to be able to rotate but he gets taken out by Roy so that was an absolutely imperative kill that EG needed to pick up and they've done a fantastic job pressuring bottom middle this game. Yeah I mean look they haven't even gone back for nest control and they've already racked up over 40 seconds from this poor man setup as you like to put it uh, Tom so 63 up essentially doubling the score now this is you know essentially maybe this controller this setup just works better for these guys you also had Victory X setting up with the shotgun and yard so it's always nice when you can have one player lock down a stronghold by himself yeah it worked a lot longer than i thought it would i think that was about 20 points which is probably about 15 more than i thought they were going to get but then this is the ideal setup coming out from nb and we've already seen what they can do with it i believe they had about 30 points on their previous one so assuming that's going to happen again this game eventually may get tied up again right around the time that the camouflage is coming up so be on the lookout for that there's a yard battle that's taking place looks like they ended up trying to go for that triple cap which may not have been the best play but hugh ends up getting Ninja with the crouch. Ninja wasn't expecting him to be crouching that entire time. So now the points are going to be able to wrap up, rack up even quicker. They're going to stop the bleeding here from EG. Here comes a player crouching, though, snipe down, waiting in that cafe area for anybody to push. Very common area to hide. You just use your radar and wait for them to walk by. Usually one or two players will come around, but I'm shocked that Victory has been able to walk over here for free. Yeah, it's normally not something you see, but he does win the 1v1 with lesser position, but the stronger weapon. That's going to be two kills. You got a player weak by the truck here. He's going to drop two. He's not able to get away in time. That's going to control back over to Evil Geniuses. You're right. They did pick up. Envy did grab a lot of seconds, but just over 20. So eventually, or essentially, and that was with a triple cap as well. This is Evil Geniuses really controlling the map better and more efficiently than Evil Geniuses, or excuse me, than Envious has been able to do so. Ooh, nice shots from victory and he's been a big part of eg being able to come back and reverse triple cap now and again i was just shocked at how victory was able to walk up that loop area for free hook was waiting over there s4 and had another player top nest i guess they were too distracted and preoccupied what was going on in the rest of the map that's a shotgun player onto the camo player but victory is going to be able to get it he's on a seven spree now and also has this camouflage for quite a while he should be able to uh, hold these players off the nest and this could be the game going over to eg already the triple caps 
Ghost gonna be able to continue. If Victory X is able to stay alive with this camo, that should be the first game going over AG. Looks like that's gonna be the case. Pistola ends up killing him with that splinter, but there's not enough time. Game one, EG. And that was a really impressive performance. I mean, they were able to just lock down two hills and for, if it essentially only gave Envious another 15 or so seconds, even when Envious had a triple cap that game. Just take a look at the slays here. You had Victory X, the uh, second oldest player in the league. Now we might have to clarify that since we got the return and nated, but Victory X doing big things for this squad. And then Roy, you know, we talked about him before the game. He had six captures. That's more than any other two members of Envious combined here. So his objective work is on odd par right now with anybody. Yeah, and the big turning point was Victory X's killing spree because he was able to get the camouflage after that. I don't even think he, he finally ended that splinter grenade that Pistola threw on the lift, and by then it didn't necessarily even matter. But Envy had complete control. They had S4, they had Top Nest under lockdown, and Victory X just went up there, and typically you get severely punished for going over there, especially if you go by yourself. So. Uh, again, I don't think that that's something that's very characteristic coming out from Envy or really any of these squads here in the Pro League, but the play works out for Victory X and there was enough distraction for him to be able to go over there and rotate. And now we're gonna move into Plaza Slayer. And again, we're not really sure who the advantage is gonna go over to here. Is EG just the better strongholds players on Plaza or are they actually better than Plaza than, e uh, than Envy in general, but if you're Envy, you can't afford to go down two to zero in this series. And, you know, speaking of the Evil Geniuses squad here, their communication must be on point right now. To go back to that situation where Mikwin was able to grab the camo, stayed alive for quite a few seconds, dropped down, ran around uh, bottom mid, essentially r trying to just escape with his life, but Evil Geniuses was able to collapse from, I think, three different members and eventually take him out without getting damaged or having that player have any real input with that camo. And then on the flip side of that, you saw Victory X grabs that camo, does the exact same thing, stays alive for a few extra seconds, and then picks up a reversal on the shotgun player who charged him. So big swing happening there when the camo and shotgun get taken out of Allegiance's hands, or excuse me, of Envy's hands. Yeah, and I think Envy still is gonna be red here, which has a little bit of advantage when it comes to being able to secure the overshield. So maybe if they're able to get the overshield and get off to a good start, that'll give them some sort of advantage. But they had a good start last game as well they were able to build up a little bit of a lead then eg elected to go for a bottom center push and ended up capturing bottom center so it looks like they care more about pushing down from below and controlling blue and and things like that than they do actually going towards that loop area uh they probably have a handful of different uh take back strategies based on where the enemy team is positioned um uh, but again i'm just so shocked that victory x was able to just you know mosey on up the stairs and just walk up over there and get the first couple shots onto huke and who if he could have won that battle, he almost did. He had a pistol, and Victory X still had first shot with the BR. That would have definitely made that game a lot closer. But again, I thought that Envy was going to walk away with that one because of the fact that Allegiance dominated, you know, so hard uh, against EG in that previous Strongholds last week. But that wasn't the case, and that's not a good sign for Envy. We're talking about how bad Snipedown wants to win this. You would assume that the first game they were going to come out swinging, and it was the exact opposite. EG came out swinging. Yeah, and you brought up that Pistola versus Victory battle. Now, it was Hook, I, Hook. or yeah, excuse me, Hook versus Victory battle. Now, I would like to go back and like look at the play to see where everyone else was, but it really didn't seem like Evil Geniuses had any other angles on Hook. And that was Envious controlling uh, the the uh, the sniper stronghold as well. And who committed to that fight? I mean, he could he did not have to drop. He was down already to fight he was that. already like dropping down to check that area because he realized that someone was eventually going to come there. But it's pretty much on him or it's on someone else that he was working with to be sitting there and watching that area. Typically, you want to actually have a body there on that poster area or just someone maybe in that light rifle area. But it's really annoying when you know I'm not sure if the frag grenade still spawn there but there's frag grenades that used to be right on top of that stairs area right where those posters are that's a pretty prime spot to sit it's hard to land grenades over there you don't have much angles especially if your teammates are spread out over there towards the hotel area and then you have the guy s4 all you need is that one guy that's anchoring he's also in position to potentially add pressure towards the loop if people get him weak and then you could have another guy like top yellow or roaming or adding pressure or maybe over there working with the guy at hotel on dip um but yeah it was just nice take back strategies coming out for me, G, that's all it was, and a little bit of miscommunication coming out from NV. Yeah, result. well, even that that hook drop down. I mean, he could have jumped.
jumped in the air, stabilized, just looked down there, thrust it back onto S4. He could have, he thrust it and fully committed to the fight. Yeah, I'm you not know, necessarily worried about the commit as much as I'm worried about how far Victory X got up the stairs yeah, that before. Is really uh, usually you don't even get to the loop. Usually you get to the loop and people are already jumping up and down, looking at you. In well, Plaza, you're going to see the sniper there. You know, typically, you know, there's no sniper rifle in, in Plaza Strongholds, but in Plaza Slayer, if someone's controlling that snipe area, you bet, you know, you bet your bottom dollar that they're going to be looking over there towards the loop with the sniper rifle, or someone's going to at least have a body over there towards the and making sure someone doesn't walk up there. You have the radar. There's no excuse for anyone to come and break your setup without them crouching. So that was a big misplay, big, uh, not necessarily misplay in terms of challenging, but just misposition coming out from NBA and not looking at the right spot. But and like you pointed out before this game as well, there is going to be a sniper on this map. So the first time we are seeing that going to be used here so far this series, and we've got a lot of good snipers on both of these different squads here. So Evil Genius is looking to continue where they left off. And that sniper is over in Envious' hands. I like this play out of Lunchbox back and down. Yeah, they also have Overshield, like I said. Red, red Team does have the positional advantage in terms of grabbing that Overshield. You get there a little bit quicker. You also have to walk out towards from the flower area, which it's just a little bit too open. You have much more cover from the red side. It looks like Hook's going to be able to get that snipe. But even though with that snipe and the uh, Overshield pickup, they're only up two kills, and they actually don't have map control at this point because of the fact that you see Ninja on that posters area. Lunchbox is also going to get the spawn. Now Ninja's going to collapse on the sniper rifle. He takes out Mikwin, former teammates, and good friends there as well. And now Snipe Down's caught in a little bit of weird position because you know he wants that sniper rifle. It's just sitting there, and he gets killed by Roy. So that's twice now Roy's outshot Snipe down already within the first minute of the game so Roy's out for blood meanwhile Ninja has the sniper and this game is pretty much tied up and we'll stay on board to see what happens in this little 1v1 Roy's got going on but like you said that was Ninja with the snipe sniper looks like he did lose that as well so that's gonna be a death sniper just going all over the place back in the hands of snipe down four shots left he is gonna need to reload this pretty quickly and sure enough there he goes for it knows there's a player in hotel looking to cut off some angles and essentially just keep this position locked down it's not gonna be a whole lot of time before the next sniper comes up as well and of course we've got over shield that these teams need to contest well this is what I'm talking about see how players shouldn't even be getting to that point it's because one of his teammates died on that side of the map and then Ola's over there at the hotel area so someone needs to either Ola or someone else needs to rotate over there it looks like snipe down is gonna be the one to just drop down and try to use his radar and try to get the picks while his teammates are running around but you know ideally he would be back up here or s4 not necessarily even worried about this area of the map and someone else would be able to watch it and he can just pick off players uh wherever he feels fit so i again i think that someone for every needs to get over here and rotate overshield coming up here pretty soon you need to make sure that you're not giving up any dumb deaths on the side of eg right when it's coming up and here's snipe down is he gonna be able to go for it looks like one of his other teammates are that's gonna be enough distraction he also gets that body on the uh on the cam which is victory x so Slay's going on the side of Envy, and Snipedown's finally taken out. Pretty good job here by Evil Geniuses, and Roy just backing down, staying alive as long as possible. Does get some good grenades off, but it's not going to be enough, as Hook does, in fact, pick up a double kill off that situation here. Big one collapsing on Evil Geniuses. They're not able to grab any footing. Yeah. It's an eight-kill lead here now. EG's just not ready for this collapse, and that's a smart play. When you get that overshield, just immediately collapse. A lot of times you see the overshield guy be the sniper guy, and I'm glad to see Snipedown ended up backing off and let his teammate give that one up, uh, mainly because a player was shooting him from that barrel that we're looking at right now but uh, this is good start for Envy they need to make sure that they don't give up map control and they work together one of the things that I'm worried about is this over aggression come, could come back to bite them because they could potentially give up the spawns but as long as they're just working together and on top of those I wouldn't be worried about it oh. Roy giving Hook the business we've seen Roy win numerous 1v1 so far that was really really bad let's just talk about I mean, how he, he got SMG. outplayed yeah exactly SMG against the BR and up close battle he missed so many shots there this is not the same kind of performances we've seen from Hook. Hook has not been performing as a top five player so far this season and it looks like someone back into that splinter grenade that lunchbox has already thrown but meanwhile trading kills back and forth doesn't really matter much for envy they don't really care uh that's not going to be a big deal for them because snipe down has that rifle in his hands and now he's going to be rotating over here 
towards the loop area and spotting players in the yard. And again, the aggression coming out from Envy is not expected from the EG side, but Snipe Down over pursued that kill a little bit too much. And that's gonna give the sniper over to Lunchbox. This is the opportunity for EG to come back, but Mikman with the green gun is gonna get that back in the possession of Envy. And this is a death sniper now. Whoever picks this one up is gonna die. Let's see if Mikman's able to stay alive with this one. He's just pooping grenades out left and right through his armpit, ends up getting out of that situation. So nice job by Mikwin getting out of there and making his way towards the yard. That was great map movement. He played it perfectly. I don't think he would have lived if he had done anything different in that situation. Yeah, and let's see if he's able to get some picks here, because if he's able to at least get one or two, that should be able to secure the overshield for Envy. I'm not sure where that one went. It looks like everyone is going to be pushing in towards the yard area, so uh, not very common that you see an epic fight in this area of the map going on in Slayer. Typically, you see it more in Strongholds. Let's see if Mikwin's able to do anything with the sniper rifle. Looking for the two-for-one on the Twins, but they say no, and here's a potential comeback coming out for the side of EG. They all collapsed on that yard area from the loop side, and now... Let's see if uh, this guy gets any better from the HCS. Hopefully he feels better soon. Uh, glad that you're watching us. And hopefully, yes, maybe get one of those balloons or something like that, or, or a card. Now, I also want to point out here, let's not forget last week, Evil Geniuses was down, what, like 20 to four or something completely ridiculous against Optic Gaming and brought it back and with an opportunity to win towards the end of the game. So this game is still far from over. We've seen exactly how you know, talented and disciplined these teams are at being able to come back from a big deficit. Nice snipe. Snipe down with this weapon. It's going to be hard for EG to come back. It's 12 kills. They need a lot more than Envy does at this point, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do so. The spree has to happen now if you're EG. And again, Envy, they really wanted this game. You could tell that they know they, they can't go down 2-0 in a series against a team that's, you know, tied for first place, just beat Optic Gaming, and it's your former teammates. You know, the momentum game is really big at this point so everyone's just going to be charging out individually here for the side of EG it's going to be really hard for them to actually make some sort of comeback here overshield coming up here pretty soon but I don't think there's even going to be enough time and even if they were able to grab it I don't think it would necessarily matter but and that's, it's not necessarily over till it's over I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt starts with getting this kill on the snipe down which is what they needed to do so lunchbox doing a nice job here I want to see the stats Kyle so let's pull up the stats really quick and to see where everyone's at in victory x 4 and 11 so that's kind of the big difference here is negative seven in about a 10 kill game so looking at him to really step it up that next game oh and McWin surviving with that sniper is heartbreaking in this position or at this point in the game here although Roy being pretty sneaky himself as he catches McWin trying to skedaddle away there there's two more players over in in cafe area, looks like they are collapsing. Look at all these players just flying across the map. Now, who great job, and that's gonna put him even this more positive jump. grabbing these kills. Yeah, this is the jump, and you know, they did collapse on that, but they gave up two kills. Now, if it was 39 to 46, it would be completely different because you could slowly just get these picks with the sniper in Roy's hands. But because they sacrificed a couple of deaths there, deaths there it's going to make it so much more difficult. And now they do spot where Roy is. So Roy being uh, aware of his surroundings, realizing that Ola's pushing up from the blue ramp. Nice shot by him being aware of that. Not sure if he even got a call out, but uh, he's going to have to do something miraculous here. He has how many bullets? Nine left. He's going to have to pretty much get all those kills because it's pretty much curtains for these guys. The EG nail in the coffin, and there it is. It's tied up one-to-one, -one. and again, that was a must-win coming out from the side of Envy. I'm not surprised that they were able to walk away with that one. Victory X ends up picking up a couple more kills to only go negative five, but really, that's just, you know, it's just Envy knowing that they can't afford to lose this game and just stepping it up, and if you're EG, you have to know that the games aren't going to get any easier in this series. It's going to be just like the caliber of Optic Gaming. It, every game is going to get more and more tough. It's going to get closer and closer. That wasn't as close of a first game as I thought here. Now it's going to be a wake-up call for both teams. I think we're going to really start to see them perform at both at their highest level now. I think that we saw EG play their best in that first game, and then we saw Envy play their best in the second game, and now everyone's going to be playing their best from here on out. Yeah, and I mean, we've always talked about how strong of a slaying team Envy is, is, and their ability to pick up kills without dying, and that's why, you know, we said before, like, they are going to be a stronger team slayer, and if anything, when they got 3-0'd by Liquid last week, they, you know, were up a lot in that slayer game, and blew the lead, essentially. Liquid was able to grab two snipers, and I think even have 
they did not have rockets, but grab two snipers at the end of the game and pick up all those kills to come back and actually defeat Envy. So Envy is like, let that Slayer go by, but with that one excluded, this is a strong slaying team, a team that is really going to be able to win, you know, game fives, essentially, should they go to yeah. that. And this is going to be an awesome game three. Coliseum CTF. We haven't seen much Coliseum CTF, and it's one of my favorite game types to play and to watch and to cast. But we saw in the interview with Ninja how he said that they wanted to avoid this game type, not necessarily because they're bad at it, because Optic Gaming was so good at it. I'm curious to see now if that's the truth. Maybe it was something that they were avoiding because they didn't feel that comfortable on it. And again, this is one of those maps that slang power has a, a big influence on things because if you get the sniper and say snipe down his hands he goes over in towards the cave area it's just not a good time on the other hand controlling rockets is another big part of this map as well so whoever's able to get momentum in the beginning of the game you know sometimes this game could end in three or four minutes we saw luminosity with two caps in a minute last week and it's not uncommon in scrims or you know even at the tournament for people to get goosed on this map because of how fast and snowball it can get we, if you get one pair of rockets sometimes you're getting two caps just off those rockets alone so if whoever can control the weapons it's going to be up to the coaches here i mean we have an epic coaching battle we have alumni going up against Tawi. you know and keep in mind that ogre 2 is analyzing for eg as well so there's a lot of you know behind the scenes work getting put in here and whoever's going to be able to secure the weapons is going to be able to control the map and win yeah, and right before this, during that commercial break, you should have seen a video from uh, Towie, and it's going to be the Evil Geniuses squad going over to that Xfinity Training Center and actually getting to see their new team house. And I told Towie I'd give him a shout-out here for putting some of those clips together this weekend. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you can see him on YouTube.com, the Ryan Towie. So there you go, Towie. Get, you got your shout-out. Now, of course, like you said, this is going to be Coliseum. And this is one of my favorite maps as well because you just see so many ridiculous things happen. Mainly, I think a lot of that comes down to the cave and Royal 2 because we've yeah. all seen what that kid's well, been able to do. I just love these symmetrical maps where it takes just as long for one team to get towards the power weapons as it does to the other team. I love the open angles. Uh, I love when you are given uh, probably anywhere from three to five or six routes in the beginning of a map where you can either make your way towards scattershot, make your way towards rockets, make your way towards sniper. Everyone's pretty much rewarded with a weapon if you're able to walk away with a win here, and then someone else can maybe necessarily go for the objective. Now, Coliseum capture the flag, Tom. Series tied up 1-1. Give me some predictions here. Well, based on the way that NB was shooting last game and the way that they were able to slay, I'm going to give them the advantage in, in this game. But again, I had my predictions wrong so far, you know, starting even with game one. So this is one of those series that's going to be very hard to call. I definitely thought that Allegiance was going to walk away with that win against LOL. I think Luminosity has the advantage over E6. And I also think that Optic Gaming has the advantage over Liquid. But this series here... It's up to the players to really step it up. And we saw in that interview with Shooter how it's about matchups. Mm -hmm. And Snipedown's talking about how they typically beat these guys in scrims and they're not necessarily worried. Well, you know, Optic Gaming beat EG in scrims pretty badly yesterday or the day before, but that doesn't really mean much because of the fact that they lost last week to them here in the Pro League. So um, it's all about who's playing their best at the time. Yeah, I mean... Everybody's seen the movie Miracle, or at least I hope so, because it's a great. But, hey, it doesn't matter if you lose nine times out of ten. You just got to win that one game for, for when it counts. Win three. Win <laughs> three. Win three. But <laughs> one series. Yes. One series. Well, if everyone could just, if it was about winning one game, LOL would be first because they're always winning one game out of the series. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, again, a lot's going to be said over these next three games. Whoever wins this one, they're going to be very confident moving forward. Uh, again, we saw Snipe Down talking about how he wants to prove that he won the battle of the team changes and, and feel that his decision was the correct one. And that mental boost, having that confidence in your teammates, it goes a really long way. Almost it, it's more important mentally than it is actually um, when what's actually happening in the game. It, it really does matter because it carries over to your practices. It carries over um, just towards the environment as a whole. So you want to be feeling that you definitely, you know, didn't make the wrong decision by, by leaving your team that you got X Games gold with. Now we're about to jump into this game, but let's take a quick look at the vetoes and see how we ended up on a Coliseum capture the flag on game number three. So Stasis coming in and getting banned by Envious, followed up by a Truth EG ban, which is kind of surprising, especially considered they beat Optic at it on that game number four. 
then a Fathom ban from Envy. It's not too surprising there, as uh, Fathom definitely is one of those maps that can go either way. And we've seen Evil Geniuses play really well on it. But of course, that's going to leave us with a Coliseum flag number. I'm game stoked. Number three. I'm stoked three. to see this. I mean, we've seen. I'm still recovering from seeing so many Fathoms already in the finals uh, for summer. So it's refreshing to get Coliseum here. Um, again, I think that this is one of the most competitive game types in Halo 5. This really shows the team's dominance. It shows how well they work together, how good they are on top of controlling the weapons, how much they can punish other teams for being, you know, out of position. And and yeah, whoever wins this game is gonna be, this is the swing game. Game three is always a swing swing game in these one-to-one -one series. And more often than not, whoever wins this game is gonna walk away with the series. All right, now Tom, I'm wanting to start this one off here with Pistola, of course, former teammate of Lunchbox and Roar, like we've discussed, and known as the Wizard, has had a great Halo career. Pushes Rockets, Lunchbox not expecting him. That's gonna put Rockets over into his hands. And I like that play, running around, running away with them, excuse me, as quickly as possible, gets him back to the base, and just take him right over towards Sniper side. Yeah, and you can see Pistola has not a lot of deaths, only 12 deaths on average, which is, you know, which Wizard is a pretty small, small number. And that's because one of the things that he specializes is staying alive. And because you stay alive, you put yourself in these type of positions, especially when you have other players opening up the rest of the map. But Hooks get, take out, get taken out of the window. Pistola with a nice rocket there. He's going to need Snipe Down to get in there and run the flag. But because he threw a nade, that's going to snipe Snipe Down. Also, Ninja in the back of the base. So let's see if Snipe Down's able to get this flag out. This is a really good setup here. They're taking it back towards Snipe side. But Evil Genius is coming off spawns. Whoa. He's able to get there really quickly. Now, Pistola does grab that kill there on Lunchbox, but does suicide himself as well, or ends up just dying as well. Mikwit, not looking at the radar, doesn't see oh. the player there. <laughs> Tom, what just happened? And that was essentially, I'll tell you what happened. That was completely ridiculous. And that, I should have gone over to the, the, the fly capture, but I was in such shock from what he just did to Roy that I did not make it over in time. But Mikwit, just showing why you can be so dangerous with the sniper rifle and how game-changing it can be. I was just about to talk, and then I started choking on my spit, and you asked me what happened, and <laughs> I died is what happened. That, that play was sick, and that secured the capture there. But Roy with a nice little sneaky play there. Pistola didn't get the call out in time. And those are the type of plays that you need to do when you're you know, not in a position to have control. You need to wait for the enemy team to push in, use your radar to your advantage, get that pick, and then start to collapse. And it looks like they're going to be able to get the snipe control. Oh, Bistola falling off the map. That's going to open up the map even more. Woohoo! Snipe down getting the kill onto Roy when he's no shields. That almost stops a flag cap. And it looks like three players on the side of EG able to get into the base. And look how much damage snipe down was able to do and distract for Mikwin to get that double kill. And that may stop this flag cap here. Victory now in a bad position because of that play, too. So Roy not getting that kill on the snipe down results in a little bit of a snowball effect. And now Control going back over to Envy. So again, Kyle, we talk about how these plays, we can look back in certain games and just look at one turning point, one kill that went one way that shouldn't have. And that was one of them. And now McWin jumping around here with Snipe Tower. Looks like he's most likely out of ammo in this sniper. And you've got Pistola, of course, hiding below him with the rockets, just crouching around, trying to be a good distraction, pick up a few kills. Now, who SMG. Now, we haven't seen the best SMG out of him earlier today. But needless to say, this weapon is incredibly powerful, especially in those up-close 1v1s. Now, if you're taking a look at the right side of your screen here, this is going to be their average kills, assists, and deaths here based on week one's performance as well. So, who known to be a fantasy stat mastermind, not starting off quite as strong here this season. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to put up the same amount of stats when you have players like Snipe Down, Pistola, and Mikwin on your team. Keep that in mind. When you're playing with, say, Kratos and Shooter, for example, on E6, those are the type of players that just get in there and do the objective. They do so much dirty work that it allows a player like Hoop to really go out there and shine and slay, and that's why we saw him um, have such good fantasy stats uh, on the same side, Snipe Down. Snipe Down had such amazing fantasy stats because of the fact that players like Lunchbox Roy, they get into the base, they, you know, distract for you, they pull the objective, and that allows you to slay more. And um, we're not going to see these guys being one and two again in the fantasy stats. It's going to be uh, a much 
different race here. Uh, I wouldn't doubt to see someone like Roy, for example, step up into the fantasy area because of the fact that he's so comfortable uh, with his teammates and another player like Ninja as well. Lunchbox and Roy, they, they really open up the map and they have so much communication that it gives you the necessary information that you need to go and get the kills. Oh, and look at this. You do have Lunchbox pushing in the base. Snipe down comes off spawn over near Rocky Corner. There is going to be a quick fight happening here. Victory trying to stay alive and distract for as long as possible, trying to wait for help. Lunchbox with the Rockets does end up picking up one kill, but he drops as well. Pistola. Trying to watch these Rockets here. Pistola got two big kills. If he wasn't able to get those one shots, they should have been able to get that flag out for EG. So a couple times where EG's been in position, but both Mickwin, Snipedown, and Pistola have all stepped it up individually and just made some plays that made EG uh, take longer than they wanted to actually get the flag pulled out. So looks like another one's being pulled here. Not sure where it's going. Looks like we have a potential elbow run here coming out from Ninja, which is really smart considering they don't have control. And that's what I really like to see. Sometimes players say, if we don't have control, we're not going to run the flag. But Ninja not able to get that kill on the snipe down. And Mikwin dropping uh, Roy at the same time is going to be able to get this return. If they got those slays, they could have potentially got that flag a little bit further, maybe even captured it. But I like where their mind's at. And it was the Wizard of Pistola staying alive behind that base. Distracted Roy long oh. enough that he was. <gasps> oh my, no. He could have bounced that off the wall there. Instead, ends up running right into the splinter grenade and gets betrayed by his teammate. Pistola doesn't know where the players on the flag are and is in the elbow. He needs the rest of his teammates to go over towards the snipe side while he's over here. Does have the scatter shot, so this is a pretty good position to be in, but here comes the collapse for the side of EG. Roy getting a kill. There comes the nade from his twin brother, Lunchbox. That's two players now for the side of Envy to fall. Now, this is Lunchbox's opportunity to push in. Does see this player on his radar. That's going to be Hook. Hook with the nice nade off the wall. Does get the shots on the Lunchbox as well. Lunchbox needs to be a better, uh, be a, better be a carbine here and, and clean these kills up a little bit quicker, but nonetheless, calls it out to Ninja. Gets that kill. Nice job staying alive too and here comes the push here for EG let's see if they're able to finally get this flag out lunchbox ends up choking these spawns on the elbow so where are the spawns gonna be it looks like under the base there which is pretty far up so lunchbox maybe choked the spawns a little bit more than he would have liked to but nonetheless does have a nice combination to be in the base if he's able to get this kill on a pistol he does possible double cap here coming out lunchbox is like just cap the flag already I want to be able to push this instead rotates over there they don't spawn on the elbow for the side of envy now potentially could get the rockets here for the side of EG yeah I mean lunchbox if anything you know he was watch in front of the base. It looks like he had enough confidence in his teammates to stay behind and picks up two kills from players coming out spawn in the base. Ooh. There's no better way to guarantee a flag cap than doing something like that. Yeah, and I'm not sure what the thought process was there to charge in with the scatter shot from such far range, but nonetheless, nice spree from Lunchbox, and that secures a capture here. Another flag being pulled out from the side of EG, and a sick stick coming out from Roy. He dies, though. Hook took him to no shields, but nonetheless does get that flag out pretty far. Let's see if Ninja's going to be able to help secure this one. Instead, he's running around looking for a player at his base. Could have definitely went to the window and watched that flag, so that player distracting a little bit more than uh, needed to be done, but nonetheless, Ninja pushing in here. Going aggressive in towards the window, gets caught though, has to back off, sees Ola over there, nice grenade off the wall, oh. six splinter coming out from Ninja, also nice job keeping his shields, working with Lunchbox, couple players for Envy baiting over there towards the elbow side, he's gonna fly in and look for the kill on the snipe down, but Mikwin has the sniper on the flag and snipe down stays alive in the back of the base and getting those little picks there when EG is pushing into your base is gonna really slow them down. Another great nade here by Victory, you did have the sniper in the hands of uh, Evil Geniuses, but he gets dropped as well, this nice is still nade. tied up, we're under five minutes left in the game, here to play. Snipe down did a great job earlier distracting for as long as possible, preventing anything from happening. Now, Pistola, we haven't seen a lot of sniping from him yet. Yeah, pretty rare when you check those stats. I noticed that Snipe down had the least kills in the game. And again, as the number two uh, fantasy player or a top five fantasy player from last season, that's not uh, very conventional coming out from him. Yeah, he does pick up a couple kills in the meantime, but really looking you know, for him after that interview to step it up. But either way, Envy does have good position here. Pistola with the sniper doing the right move, making his way over towards the cave, eventually gets spotted out. Bad timing, uh, unfortunate for him coming out from the guy on the flag, but he's doing his best to try to stay alive and everyone on top of him for EG. So sick communication out for EG is going to stop Ola. Yeah, the EG teamwork is just good enough to where they're preventing any one of these players oh. from really getting their footing and he's suicided with the plasma, was yeah, that? Yeah, he did. Hook ended up shooting a plasma up into the air and then clambered into his own plasma after that. So that's three dead. Mikwin and Snipedown also dropping. Last player is going to be 
over at the red base as well. So everybody trapped over in their base. Who ended up killing himself is going to be back on spawn. He drops immediately to victory. Roy ends up dying, but three players dead here. Where's the last player? He's going to be sniped down. He's crouching over there, bottom center. Also in a good position, but victory get that flag pretty fast, very quickly. And he's going to be able to put this one in. Nobody on the side of Envy in position. So sick flag run coming out from EG, especially victory. I'm really curious to know if they saw that come up on the death V or if they knew that Hook actually committed suicide and then just immediately went for the oh, flag yeah, to try to sure. use that. It's a great heads up play from Evil Geniuses. Wow, and look at they're still getting slays and they have rockets in their hands and someone's in position to run the flag here. Needs to get that kill on a snipe down. Snipe down's taken down to one shot. That was two rockets used to possibly get one kill and they do finally get it. Here's the flag pressure. It's getting pushed pretty quickly here. Looks like Victory's gonna grab this one. Oh, <laughs> Victory, I don't know about that play. Pistola picks up two kills. Mikwin getting a kill as well. They should be able to get this return and they do. So let's see if Envy's able to capitalize on that encounter counter capture, but I would have liked to see Victory slay a little bit more in that instance. They didn't need two people to go for the flag. A little bit hectic communication maybe coming out from the side of EG, and they could have baited that one a little bit harder. That opens up the rest of the map here for Snipe Down and the rest of Envy, and this is uh, Snipe Down's opportunity, and this power position gets that Snipe on a lunchbox, sees another player down below, and this is where Snipe Down specializes in seeing players they don't get the shot on him. When he sees players, he never misses the shot. Very rare to see Snipe Down miss a free shot. And it's just because he's always in really good position. And there's really good points as well. I mean, Victory X, like, if he did not miss those rockets, there's a good chance. It's hard to argue that it would not have been an actual flag cap. He absolutely would not have had to take as much damage, would have been able to use a second rocket in the chamber to pick up yep. another kill. Snipe Down would have been dead. There's a lot of things that just went wrong for Victory X. Yeah, and as you can see, Snipe Down, he even has good shots when it's up and close. But that's the type of thing that you need to do. You need to get close to him. You need to try to get your assault rifle out, go for the trade. At that point, I would take that trade any day of the week to get the sniper rifle out of his hands and into someone else's hands. But the problem is, is anyone on Envy is good with that weapon. You put it in Hook's hands, he's going to do damage. Mikwin and Ola, they're fantastic snipers as well. So uh, that's one of the scary things about this Envy squad is they're they're really good, great at slaying and they know what to do with the weapons. So um, you're going to have to, you know, again, Victory X missing those two rockets. That was a big play. And now Hook's going to be able to capitalize here. If he's not missing any rockets, they should be able to get this one. There's a missed rocket though. Ninja takes him down to no shields. Ninja doesn't get the kill, but that should be enough damage to at least slow Hook down. He's not taking down to no shields. Mikwin with the sniper as well. That's only one player for the side of EG trying to escape over there. That's Lunchbox. The spawns are going to be in the cave, so let's see what happens. Oh no, they actually spawn in the elbow while he's over there with the rocket, so unfortunate for the side of EG. Last capture is going to be going in. I think Envy should be able to secure this one. Hook doing a nice job. Here comes Victory X into the window. Victory X flying in. Can he get the touch? He does. So here comes the return. Three, two, and that's going to be it. Game number three going over to Envy. And that's a heartbreaking loss if you're evil geniuses because like we were just touching base on Victory X had an awesome opportunity to essentially secure his teams the win and he misread what Snipe Down was about to do. He did not see him jumping up to that DMR location yeah. and clamoring up and then immediately once he changed or once he realized what was happening tried to switch the next rocket this was to that play location as well. but not that able was a to huge succeed. play. So Roy not getting that kill and Victory X not getting the kill both I think were on to Snipe Down and then snipe down getting the sniper in his hands and able to go on that spree but to me those were the big misplays coming out from eg and it's unfortunate because they're both on players that should have been very easy textbook kills it's just sometimes uh, a player can make a nice play like snipe down did to bounce that grenade and thrust and then other times you're expecting something fantastic you know a sick play coming out from him and necessarily all he did was clamor up and it's nothing special he just you know holds his left bumper or whatever he's playing and now he's going to make his way up towards you know that area and victory x needed to save those rockets for when people were going to return the flag or at least land that first rocket and then save the second one and instead ends up having to push his way over towards the flag ends up having a desperate it and then has to desperate again there towards the end of the game let's not forget that one of those flag caps came off of a hook uh you know single or solo suicide out of him as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Evil Geniuses had everything going right for them to win the game and they were not able to execute. Now, we do have the players set up in the next game already. Let's not waste any time. This is gonna be Strongholds on Eden. Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? We have not seen this too often here so far. Well, momentum heavily in NB's favor. EG has to be shooting themselves in the foot or, you know, feeling like they shot themselves in the foot after that game. They lost a lot of big opportunities. Again, in order for EG to win this one, someone's going to have to go big. Someone's going to have to throw up some ridiculous stats, you know, 
25 and, and 12 or something along those lines. And I think that has to be Roy, Roy or Ninja. Those are the guys, in my opinion, that are fully capable of that. But Envy, they're going to be smelling blood. Ook, free, uncontested rockets here going in his hands. Now, no strongholds being captured yet, but you do have players working on multiple ones. You see Top Catwalk going over to Evil Geniuses, while this, or excuse me, Hook is working over here on the Ben. Now, he, they, both of these players are going to drop. Roy does get the better trade, I'd say, in that situation, as actually takes out Rocket Player. And Ninja, whose nade was a little bit deeper. He would have taken him out, but be careful. There's a player trying to contest this. Now, Snipe Down not able to contest it long enough. It's going to be three members dead now for Envy. Perfect opportunity for Evil Geniuses to capture some control, and they're focusing on Nest immediately. Yeah, this is actually a potential triple cap coming out from the side of EG, but looks like someone rotated over towards Blue Ben. That's going to be sniped down, so let's see if EG is able to get him out of there because everyone's going to be spawning over there towards that blue platform area and probably making their way towards security. Now they get the split spawns Ola does over towards the Red Bend area, so everyone all spread out here for EG because of the spawns going on for the side of Envy. Um, typically want to try to get that control of Catwalk, but this this isn't a bad setup as well, that Red Nest outside area, but you need to try to get this guy out of the hill as much as possible. Looks like Ninja does get that reset. That player is going to be one shot over there towards the SMG area. Mikwin getting a kill on the lunchbox. That was the guy that was weak. Ninja's going to finally finish that kill off. It looks like they are rot rotating out here towards that blue bend area. Now, they can elect to get these guys out of blue bend or eventually just give it up and get control of that catwalk area. And it looks like they are trying to get these guys out instead because the rockets are coming up. Snipe down doing a pretty good job staying alive and putting shots on for lo as long as possible, but three Three members of Evil Geniuses were collapsing on that hill. Now, big fight happening. Roy coming out ahead. Now, he wants to win this, and no way we didn't wow. see from his point of view. But, wow, I can't believe he actually lived in that situation and secured the hill for his team. That was Ooh, wild. Not a big fan of this play coming from Ninja. I mean, yeah, you can potentially get the triple cap here, but that's just an overextend that didn't necessarily need to happen. He could have fall, just fell back a little bit, helped secure this overshield for Roy. Roy gets the overshield taken right in front of his face, so alumni on top of those calls. A little bit late coming out from Tawi, and that's going to be big plays coming out from uh, from Envy, and took that one right from Roy, who was just crouching over there and was in pretty prime position. Yeah, I mean, it's always a tough decision whether or not you want to go for the OS or, or let the other player get it and go for the kill, but yet yeah, not working out for him in that situation. Situation. Pistola like, clutching it up pretty hard. Big <gasps> oh, no, victory, victory X oh, ends up letting Roy die there, but ends up cool. securing the blue bend at least. However, it looks like Ninja's making his way over towards the catwalk. A couple players spawning over there towards that blue platform area. There goes Hook over there taking a no shields, and Victory X missing another rocket. So three of the last rockets shot from Victory and only one kill, and Snipe down over there able to take that blue bend area. Envy could be up a little bit in this game, but for some reason, EG's been able to walk away with this one so far, uh, mainly because they're outside setup. But now this is a really ideal uh, positional advantage coming out for the side of EG. They do have Catwalk and they do have Red Nest. All they have to do is stay on top of the map here and not drop, but they're not able to do so. And now finally, it looks like Envy's getting control of the map. And there's a lot of action happening right now. Players dying left and right. Yeah, Pistola over here, staying alive in security. They can afford to give up this blue bend area. That's fine. They can just uh, secure the catwalk and just give that up. But Ninja's in a really nice spot to flank. Looks like Victory does get this blue bend, but for how long? Ends up having a challenge because that grenade came out from Mikwin. So nice nade coming out from Mikwin. And it looks like now Snipe Down shifts focus over there towards the catwalk area, which is the right play. He does get taken out, though. And this is exactly what EG needed to do. It was okay for them to give that up. They just need to hold this setup, especially with the camouflage coming up soon. This is a really important kill. Hook doesn't get it. Roy is going huge in a number of 1v1s besides that one in the cave in that Coliseum game. And it looks like Snipe Down does walk away with these rockets. Keep in mind the overshield was picked up. It's going to be up in these next 10 seconds. Camouflage should be able to go over towards EG. With these players no shields, that should give them a huge advantage. Let's see if they're able to get it. No! Lunchbox gets it taken away right in front of them again. Hook twice now. And that was a whole lot going on in that fight. Lunchbox could not find enough ammo in his guns to shoot these players. Had a crucial nade that did hit two people, but wasn't able to finish off either kill. And that is an opportunity for Envious to jump back into this. However, Hook getting caught off guard, not looking at the hill. Roy does sneak up from the overshield, does pick up a reset. So he should be calling this player out yeah, as Hook Ninja. is escaping a lot more than he should be able to, but eventually yeah. taken out by well, Ninja. Well, Ninja was actually prioritizing another kill. He got Hook for the double kill. So it seemed like they weren't having good communication, but that's one of the things that Ninja does pretty well. He does listen and prioritize things fairly well 
Um, but yeah, this is looking really good for EG. They've had a couple of mistakes. They've even had Overshield taken right in front of their face, but yet they're still up in this game and they're continuing to build on their lead. Roy definitely needs help in that catwalk area. Nice reset coming out, nice help coming in from Victory X. Let's see if Victory X is able to take out Mikwin. Mikwin's gonna need to die. The crossfire from EG needs to come in and also stays alive behind the wall. So fantastic. Pistola hits himself with a nade. That's gonna take some of his shields down and that's gonna end up being his demise as well. So again, EG holding this catwalk red nest set up for a pretty long time. I mean, and it just looks like when we come down to these objective game types, capture the flag and strongholds, uh, Evil Geniuses, the aggression just seems to be a lot for Envious to handle, and they're not able to capitalize nearly as many times as Evil Geniuses is able to, and they're just constantly throwing so many nades. When you see that many nades blow up in Catwalk, you know that there's two, three, or maybe even four members throwing and chucking nades there. Wow, I can't believe that they're able to still secure points there and capture the blue bed while holding Red Nest. Uh, doesn't seem like the players from Envy are on the same page on which stronghold they actually want to capture. And with these rockets coming up here pretty soon, Roy can help here or he can just rotate outside as well. I want to see these guys on EG really focus on this overshield though because they've dropped the ball, they've had the time on it, they've just been letting Envy come in and swoop it in. At this point of the game, if they're able to secure either one, whether that's the overshield or the camo, that should be the game. And that's Lunchbox with the rockets and overshield. This is huge for EG. I mean, and just think, like, look at the score of this game right now. If Envious was not able to grab those two crucial overshields and actually, you know, go on a little bit of a run with them or make a difference as far as the battles go, this would be a lot less close than it is, not even considering that it's really not even that close to begin with. Yeah, and it's because they're going in there and capturing the strongholds together, and now we're finally seeing Envy collapse together. Roy gets hit with a couple of nades, ends up backing off because he realizes there's way too many players, but someone ended up lagging out there. Kyle, check the score really quick. It's 86 to 36 when that happened, so... Um, Interesting here, gonna have to get uh, in our ear from the tournament admins what's gonna happen here in this type of situation, but it only was 14 points there for EG to walk away with that one. And the thing that isn't very good for Envy is that they had control when that happened. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate for them that the game was kind of getting out of control and EG was on the verge of winning. They did have the overshield. They did have the rockets. Things were really looking good for them. But eventually Envy was going to be able to, in my opinion, uh, work around that. And they did have two strongholds right when the game ended. So uh, we'll get the wording on that, guys, on what, how the replay is going to work out. But nonetheless, I think that this one is going to be going to game five. All right. Now, that is... Essentially, uh, we did get the update on you know what we're looking at. So it is going to be Evil Geniuses needing 51 seconds to win, while Envious is going to need a full 100 seconds. So they're really so they have did to come the difference strong. of what the score was, and then it was 86 to 36, and then they said, okay, based on that information, we're going to give the difference, and it's going to be 50 point lead there for the side of um, for the side of. Evil geniuses, geniuses, but I mean, if I'm a player, I'm going to be saying, hey, that's not that bad of a situation for us on the side of Envy because there was only 14 points needed, and that's pretty much one retake there and only one more chance. So if they get off to a decent start here, the reset may be in their advantage, and and we may not be seeing a game five. But now, there's a lot of reasons that that's just like a much better system and setup to go based off of. And a lot of that comes down to the the weapon respawn times, power ups, things like that, where if your team loses the beginning setup and they need so few points to win, the game is immediately over at that point. But now with this new setup, it still gives Envious an opportunity to come out here and put up a good showing. But now Evil Genius is still with a still gets to reflect that big lead and the fantastic play that we just saw from them. Yeah, based on, you know, everything that's happened so far, I definitely think that this is a fair fair way to do it. I think ESL's done a really good job of taking in the feedback from the previous season and implementing that on a variety of different things, whether that's just like the production value or the rules. Um, and then also, you know, the land tournaments that are coming up and things like that. So just a handful of changes, you know, making this season that much more interesting and then also, or competitive. And then the players with the storylines and how competitive this is, is making it even more interesting. So a handful, a handful of reasons to watch. Yeah. I mean, and I said it on last week's show, but you know, it's not who's playing for second anymore. You know, Optic is not clearly defined as this undefeatable team. It's a, it's a race for everyone involved. But we do have the players set up in the game. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it and see exactly how they're going to be able to close this one out. 
All right, looks like Lunchbox is gonna add some nice pressure over here, over towards the catwalk. Does get dinked with a nade though, and that's gonna be Snipe down getting that kill onto him. Meanwhile, Roy rotating with the rockets here. Let's see what happens with Roy and this red bend area, because if they're able to capture this, they can immediately rotate over there towards that blue bend area, which is already being captured though, for the side of Envy. So again, Envy getting a quick little jump here. They also have that overshield. Mikwin still with overshield. That rocket didn't do that much damage coming out from Roy. And they also have the camo too. So camo and overshield going over towards enemy is going to be a pretty nice start for them. And the rocket's not even being used effectively by evil geniuses. This is exactly what Envy needs to start this one out. Sneaking around, picks up a beat down there on Victory X. You see players dropping left and right, a ground pound out of Snipe Down on Ninja. And just like that, three members down. Snipe down with three kills. That's a good start for him. And Ola with this camouflage, it is just about to run out though. So he needs to be aware of that. Sees Ninja over there towards that mid bridge area. Lays down a couple shots to him. And this is a really powerful position. A lot of people are scared to go in this area because they're, they feel like they got to be too aware of the spawns towards the left, which is the case. But you need to be confident in this area. You need to be able to jump around and realize that you can thrust and fall back towards security uh, for that reason. It's your little security blanket. There's so much room for you to stay alive in that area. And this has not been a good restart for the side of evil geniuses and it, it's getting a little bit scary here because yeah they did uh, get 50 points but it's a brand new game it's it's a replay they were only 14 points away you know from winning that could potentially be in the back of their heads and look at this player still dropping left and right i think it's so that was six unanswered kills from Envious, and just as I say it, one member does drop. Now it's going to be Victor X picking up a kill on Hook. Makewin picks up yet another perfect tier, so big things out of him so far. Still a triple cap going on in favor of Envious. Like we said, that they do have to get to much anymore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's 33 points. That was a 50, you know, point lead based on the replay from what we saw in the previous game. Again, the lag out did happen at 86 to around 36. Um, so this has not been good here for the side of EG. It, it's now 41 to zero and climbing. And the triple cap finally does stop, but this has only been the first round of power-ups. It, it's only been one overshield, one camo. Here comes the second one popping up pretty soon. It's important to win this battle here. It's gonna be Roy going up against Mikwin. Looks like Mikwin's gonna be able to get that one, get the reversal. However, Roy does get a grenade out at the same time. We see who pick up that overshield. And there goes the lead. It's pretty much, you know, 51 points at this point. And I would have to say, Envy is gotta be feeling really great on how this one's been going. Yeah, I cannot believe what we're seeing right now. If they'd come out and start playing this way last game i couldn't even imagine what would have been happening evil genius is not able to get any footing whether they're not looking at it as you know we don't need as much time and you know we're still okay but that time like that difference is already gone you need 40 seconds out of envious you need 51 seconds out of evil geniuses so the lead is in envy's hand right now well keep in mind that if we were to replay this and keep the same exact scores that the game would actually be over and envy would have won so in my opinion that's just another nod to esl on how the, the, it's a nice job of creating these replay rules and making it as fair as possible. But uh, now EG finally getting the necessary kills that they need and also Lunchbox staying alive. Uh, however, they do get a couple kills, Snipe down and Mikwin too, and that's another player that's gonna be crouching behind him. So let's see if he's able to get this kill. This is huge. Lunchbox needs to win this one to get some sort of momentum, even get a little bit lucky, but Mikwin ends up avoiding the grenade, getting the kill, and this is getting really, really scary for the side of Evil Geniuses. So, they, yeah, they had like 30 or so seconds that last game. So they might be looking at winning this 130-something seconds to to the the original 80s or so that we saw out of Evil Geniuses. This is Envy really turning it on right now. Yeah, Envy, they had a great start. They ended up getting the camouflage. They ended up getting the overshield, and they've been continually picking those up. And it's only been two rounds of the overshield in, in camo, Kyle. The third one's coming up here pretty soon. And that's Halo 5. The games can get out of control so quickly the radar is on the power weapons you know if you don't control them it's it's hard to come back with just that pistol and that assault rifle when people have the battle rifle when they have the light rifle when they have the rockets you know there's no sniper rifle on this game type in strongholds but you know in slayer it's even harder to retake control sometimes too and then make it a strongholds game type where everyone can tell exactly where you at where you're at it takes so long to capture it by yourself that you have to put in two people and now everyone's just going to collapse on the side of envy here they go they get them out of the catwalk stronghold now everyone's 
pushing Red Ness on the side of EG just because they have to get everyone out of Envy from that area. And this is looking really good from Envy. If they're able to get this reset, they should be able to. Okay, EG does get the reset. So nice job by Victory staying alive. So EG does get that reset, but they're you know on the verge of losing this game if they don't capture the catwalk. All right, this is their last chance here. They may have just enough time to actually turn that over and start putting some points on the board, prevent that goose wow. egg from coming out. And in fact, they will. That's their first point going back on. Now they need 50 more to win this. this. Is insane. But two seconds from Envious. This is insane. Now there's aren't going to be any power ups or power weapons for the next minute. So it's going to be all pistols here, which makes it even harder for EG to control the setup. And they pretty much have to play perfectly. They can't give this over. That's a no shields player in the catwalk. He does capture it. That's going to be Ola. And I don't know who else is up there, that's but it's going to be all she wrote. That's, that's it. That's going to be serious going over to Envy. And that's just really unfortunate. Snipe down 15 kills there, smelling blood on the replay. But that's just unfortunate for EG that they couldn't get it going. Yeah, I mean, the lag out, it, it's, it, it stinks. No one likes to see that. We want it to be as smooth as possible. The rules are implemented to be as fair as possible. But, you know, the replay just doesn't go over to EG's favor. I think that if the lag out didn't happen, I think EG would have walked away with that game and would be going into game five. Who's to say that EG would have even won the game five? But either way, you know, Snipe down went big. That's that's pretty much all that all that you need to know. Is, yeah, I mean uh, that whole team actually went really really big. Everybody won their beginning strats or the beginning uh, rushes. They got the camo, they got the rockets, they got that overshield as well. And Evil Genius is never able to grab any any footing. And after a dominating game one, reverse sweep. Well, th they had their chances. EG had the series in the back. They were up, you know, one to zero in the series. Moving into Plaza Slayer, NV played fantastic. Can't take anything away from them. Game three, EG had that one in the bag as well. Roy missed that huge kill on the snipe down in the cave, and they were able to get that counter cap. Victory X misses the rockets on snipe down as well, and ends up clamoring up there. And we also have snipe down in air view as well, winter view. So, um, you know, interesting that the guy that went really huge in that Coliseum game, even though he didn't realize he was going huge, is going to be the person that we're going to be talking to. All right, good deal. Now, snipe down, are you able to join us here at this point? I am able to, and I can hear you guys loud and clear. Perfect. Good to hear. Now, we listened to an interview from you before that match started. It looked off to a pretty rocky start from game one, and even in that game number th <laughs> uh, four as well. Tell us a little bit about you know what the communication was like, especially when you guys started off down the series. Yeah, actually, that game one, we had major audio issues. We were fine. We've been warming up the whole time. No audio issues at all. And then in the game, Ola's mic just turns like super robotic. We can't hear a word he's saying. And he can hear us fine. So he thinks he's just going to keep calling out and maybe it'll get better. But it was just cluttering it up and no one could really understand a word. So we were struggling. We didn't really know what to do in that situation. But um, definitely caused us to have some frustration. But going into that game two, we knew that we just had to kind of get rid of that game one jitters or whatever it was or just the, the fault that we had and come out strong in the next uh, games two, three, and four. Now, we've talked about it time and time again how you guys are a dominant Slayer team. Well, you might be a little bit weaker on maybe some of the objective game types. Now, is that how you guys feel internally as well? Actually, it's the complete opposite. You know, we went um, toe to toe with CLG or this Optic squad and two scrims this past week, and we beat them in all four strongholds game types. We beat them in like almost all these capture the flag game types and lost four out of the six game types we lost were Slayers. So we feel like we just kind of have too many um, unorganized deaths and Slayers, and it's causing our games to spiral out of control. And in objectives, we can really swarm and stay alive really well as a unit. Um, we saw that last game on Eden Strongholds. You know, the whole lag out situation is really unfortunate, but at the same time, you know, if they only needed 14 points to win, they still wouldn't have gotten that. And technically, we came out strong. We had control at the end. Even on the even in the lag out, we started getting control back. We just got power weapons, power ups, and everything. Really unfortunate. But, you know, overall, I, I feel like we're a better objective team than we are Slayers. And if anything, that's what we have to work on the most. Yeah, I feel like the rules, again, even if the lag out didn't happen and it was replayed, the, the way that it was set up has been pretty good. But let's talk about, we've been asking a lot of people this question, uh, the difference from the previous season to this season. Have you really just sensed that, you know, how much better this season is, how much closer it is, how much, competitive, how much more competitive it is? Are you guys feeling that as players? I think everyone feels that as players, you know, I said it from the start, CLG was like a year ahead of everybody. Um, when they formed that roster, they really kind of hurt a lot of other rosters. The game hasn't been advanced yet. A lot of people didn't know who was really good and who wasn't. Now I feel like a lot of teams have the players that they want. They can, um, 
get to the setups and hold setups a lot better than they than they used to be able to. CLG was just faster than everyone else, and I feel like after a long period of time, teams just caught up. And now that it's become something to where, you know, a team isn't just going to dominate this season is not like a race for second anymore. You know, every single team or a race for, um, yeah, a race for second, every team has a good chance. You know, we've seen it. EG beat CLG last week in the pro league. Some of these matches, you know, it's best of fives. You got to come out strong. And if you don't, then there other teams are going to take advantage because you know, other teams are going to be fired up, bringing you the best they can. And I'm just excited to have a really competitive league and just really happy to be part of this whole pro league situation. And now, Eric, something I'm curious about here is, you know, your living situation and what that transition has been like, you know, a little bit more in depth there, because we know you were, I believe, at the EG house initially and then hopping overboard to Envious. So big organizations with those team houses and everything going on. Tell us some more about that. Yeah, so I just want to give a huge shout out to EG. You know, they, they housed me. They did everything they could to, you know make me as comfortable as possible. And another huge shout out to Envious for, you know, picking me up and allowing me to move into these condos they have or these apartments they have in Charlotte. Um, you know, with the whole EG transfer, I had to get out of the house. They just got all those renovations with the Xfinity. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I saw a couple of preview videos before our series, but you know, I needed a place to live and Hastro took me right away. He was like, Hey man, we got these condos and apartments right, right out here in Charlotte. You know, we'd love to have you here. You can get your own place. You can stream from here. You can do whatever you want. Be in like a really what feels like a family. You know, I've never really had the experience to meet and talk with competitive gamers from other games, even in the organizations I had, you know, like I didn't meet the Dota players really. I met like Sumail um, in like a SEAL series photo shoot or something. But it, with these uh, apartments, I'm able to actually like, I've already talked to some of the Overwatch guys like Hulk and uh, Timo and just some really cool people out here. John, the Call of Duty player, he just won Worlds. And a lot of people that have a lot of stuff in common with me, it's a really great atmosphere. And a lot of people just, I'm able to go out and have some fun and, you know, be social. I'm not just trapped in a house talking online all the time, waiting to just for my teammates. You know, I'm actually allowed to get out and have a good time. It's really, really nice. Well, congratulations, Eric, on your win, as I know how much was riding on that game for both teams there. So uh, appreciate you stopping by here for the winter view and best of luck in your matches tomorrow as well. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, all, we, all we need is legit, and then we got ourselves a party. Yeah, that was almost the whole straight ripping <laughs> lineup that we had going on. And uh, shout out to Brian. Yeah, pretty cool uh, setup that he is explaining as well. We might have to make an appearance yeah, out there. I'm gonna make an appearance on that beanbag and pass out on that. <laughs> Good deal. Well, that was it for our match of the week. Series number two, Envy defeats Evil Geniuses. Now, if you miss any of the, those matches and you want to go back and rewatch them as well, you can always go to YouTube.com forward slash ESL Halo to find all of the VODs, rewatch some of your favorite teams, don't miss out on any of the action. Like we said, that is not the last match of tonight. We have Luminosity Gaming going up against Enigma 6. So some former teammates once again. A lot of drama been going on with some of these teams as well for everyone following along at home. And we'll have that match coming up right after another short break here. So don't go anywhere.